I saw uh, Dr. Farley, the Boston Red Sox, mowing yesterday on the lawn at Fenway Park in tribute to the nurses. And of course, we saw the president in the Oval Office in tribute to the nurses. Forget about the tribute. Give us an update on the reality at JHU for nurses. Well, so like you opened your segment, we are seeing glimmers of hope. Our inpatient bed capacity is stable. Uh, we have a wonderful field hospital started by our governor who is helping to unpack the hospital from, from those who have left acute illness and who need to convalesce uh, in a controlled environment. And our ventilator uh, capacity is holding strong. So we are all of those metrics are glimmers of hope uh, that we see at our health system. Jason Farley, do genetics play a very big role in who dies from COVID-19? You know, I think that's an important question, and we're currently investigating a variety of different types of genetic analyses. So there's very important differences in viral genetics. So are there differences in strains? We've heard lots about strains that come from China, strains that came from Europe. Uh, so pathogenicity of the virus itself is under investigation and those viral genetics. But more importantly is our host genetics. We as humans, what do our genes and how does our immune system respond? And so what we're seeing are evidence of individuals that may have some form of weakened immunity may have what we call a less of a strong cytokine storm, meaning the immune system doesn't respond as briskly, and therefore they may become ill, but as a result of their immune system not responding as briskly, they actually are the ones somewhat protected in moving forward into the need for mechanical ventilation. Because, because when the immune system doesn't act as briskly, you're not as overwhelmed by its response. Because it's remember, yeah. it's not the virus that actually does the bad thing. It's your immune system's response to how it um, responds to the virus. But, Jason, are, are there also disparities because of yeah. gender and race? And if there are, how, it, how can we protect the people most at risk? Yeah, well, when we think about from uh, a, a gender perspective, we are seeing data that men are at greater risk than women in terms of out bad outcome. Um, we, we have to pay very close attention related to there are increased cardiovascular and respiratory diseases in general. The prevalence is higher in men versus women. The same when you look at race. This has nothing to do genetically that we know of right now. This is to do with access to care, poverty, health disparities between populations. And so if you live in a community across any part of the world, that in which your community hospital, for example, is a low resource hospital. It's more of a, a district non-academic hospital. You may have less available intensive care beds. You may have less available ventilator capacity. You may have less options of accessing a primary care provider. And that may mean you present later to care for evaluation. And so there are many things in that, uh, in that, at that question that need to be unpacked in relation to things that may influence differences in both gender and racial disparities that we are seeing with this virus. 